10 reasons why I chose insurance versus real estate. Once I chose to leave the United States Marine Corps after eight years on active duty, I needed to quickly find a way to replace the income and a lifestyle I was providing my kids while in the military. I grossly underestimated the job opportunities with the basic skills I had while in the military with no college degree. Even if I did choose to go to college, it would still take me three to four years to realize the possibility and potential of doing so. So the scenario I was presented with, how do I make money now? How do I make sure that I can translate myself from being a helicopter crew chief and a door gunner and translate those skills onto a resume for managers to say, you're hired at least at a decent paying job. Plus, I didn't have any money to start a traditional business or let alone have the patience to sit in a classroom for years. Plus, in less than six months, my cash flow, my income from the military would be cut off from a lifestyle I was accustomed to for almost a decade. So, I was presented with three choices. Number one, consider being a real estate agent. Number two, consider being a loan officer for a mortgage company right across the street from the base. Or number three, consider being an insurance agent. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my 10 reasons why I chose the insurance industry over real estate. And if I had to make the decision all over again, I would do it the same way. Here's why, so stay tuned. What's cracking everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Cipolla here, hailing to you from the Value Tainment Studios here in Addison, Texas. So let's get right into it. Number one, it's simple. Understanding the nuances of insurance was much more simple to understand than the different deals that will go down in real estate. For example, out of 10 people, how many people right now out of 10 people will be prone to buy life insurance versus people ready right now to purchase real estate? Will there be less people to buy uh, life insurance or more people to buy life insurance? Will there be more people to buy real estate right now, assuming that they're qualified and got the credit score for it and approved by a mortgage company to go shopping with the money? Or would they be more prone to, to sit and wait for six months? Would I realize that in real estate, there are so many variables to anticipate and so much more field training would have to go into learning how to become a successful real estate agent. Plus in real estate, there are so many more emotional layers about purchasing the biggest thing you've ever had in your entire life or selling the home that you have so many emotional nails attached to holding you back from making a decision. Number two is speed. Listen, in real estate, there are so many steps. One, two, three, four, and so many different conditions that can pop up. Even a client today says, man, I'm approved. I got the right credit score. I got the, I got the down payment. The mortgage company is ready to finance my deal. Even then, at best case scenario, it's gonna take anywhere from 30, 45 days to close in a piece of property. As a real estate agent, I need to pay bills now. I don't wanna make money two months later to re retroactively pay my bills from a month ago. See, the flip side, then in life insurance, it's only one or two sit downs. Listen, what do you got? Where are your exposures at? Is this something you wanna fix? Once you get to know your clients and once you get to know their needs, it's as simple as flipping open a laptop, filling out an electronic application, and with some insurance carriers today, it's automatically approved. What does that mean for you as an insurance agent? As soon as the clients get approved, the policy gets enforced, you get paid. Not in this 30, 45, 60, 90 day deal. In insurance, you get paid within one or two weeks of you closing that insurance policy. Number three, saturation. Listen, I really appreciate HGTV to bring to light how awesome it is to be either a realtor or a real estate investor or even an interior designer or anything that really supports the real estate community. They've made it so sexy to be a real estate agent or real estate investor. The challenge with the big flood of people entering the real estate industry, they think a flip or a fix or a purchase or a sale happens within 30 minutes. No, it doesn't. You see, in those 30 minute shows, it's weeks upon weeks upon weeks of recording, filming, trial and error, negotiations, deal busting, deal breaking, deal mending, make that transaction go through. And that's what a lot of people don't realize watching these real estate type of shows. Any real estate agent or any real estate investor will tell you that it takes a lot of work with so many different unexpected scenarios that come up that you gotta put the fire out. And with all these real estate agents crowding the marketplace, guess what happens? Nobody's paying to this little insurance industry, this trillion dollar industry known as life insurance and retirement planning. Nobody's paying attention to it. And just to give you some context, the insurance industry, based on the Limerick study, the entire industry has about 150,000 insurance agents. Contrast that to how many real estate agents are just in California alone. There's just about as many real estate agents just in California as there are insurance agents in the entire national industry. Ain't that something? And here's the challenge. Because of the lack of people inside the insurance industry, there's a lack of life insurance actually helping people in the community. And, and what's the example of that? 
Well, the example is because people don't have sufficient life insurance coverage because they're not having this conversation on a daily basis or on a generational basis, guess what happens? When people fall into a financial crisis, instead of leaning on their life insurance policy as they did maybe 40, 50 years ago, people are leaning on GoFundMe? Are you kidding me? Check out the need for life insurance agents in a marketplace. Look how many life insurance claims, look how many life insurance pages for GoFundMe are around. Look how many medical expense GoFundMe pages are around. Look how many disability healthcare expenses GoFundMe pages exist today. That is crazy. And the big epidemic is people aren't having a conversation with an insurance agent today. Why? There's just not enough agents in the marketplace. And here's a scenario too as well. Of those 150,000 agents in the insurance industry I just mentioned, you know what their average age is? It's 60. And guess what's gonna happen in the next three, four, five years? They're probably going to retire. They've done a whole 30, 20, 30, 40 years of successful career in the insurance industry. Now they're retiring. Here's a problem. There's gonna be a vacuum in our industry. And at that point, where are people get their life insurance? We're gonna people have conversation with retirement planning. You see, in that problem, therein lies the true opportunity. You wanna be saturated or you wanna be unique? It's your choice. Number four is solutions. Listen, as a real estate agent, I know you provide housing. I know you're helping people provide their piece of the American dream through the purchase of real estate. I totally get it. But here's a question for you as a realtor, as a person that's generating business for your, for your family, for your business, is generating revenue from real estate sales. What's the next time you're really gonna see that family that you just help them buy the home? Six months from now? Nope. A year from now? Nope. How about four to five years? Anywhere from three, four, five, six, seven years is when the family says, you know what? Let's upgrade, let's move, let's transition. Then you, as the opportunity, assuming that you kept in contact with them, have the opportunity to list the same property that you just sold them years ago. Meanwhile, who's been in their ear? Meanwhile, have they moved you as a person in the real estate life with somebody else? Are they seeing everybody else's billboard, everybody else's advertisement, for their, for, so therefore they can get their listing through them? Are they shopping you around? Now, here's the thing with insurance. Every six months, usually things in people's lives change. What am I talking about? New job, new car, new home, new kid, marriage, <laughs> divorce. So many different things can happen every six months in a family's financial life. So you, as a life insurance agent, can be more readily available to them and be in front of their face and not only address their needs every six months, but you become a very close in terms of your relationship with that family. So therefore, the next time money comes up, subjects about retirement, subjects about insurance coverage, subjects about making sure their assets are protected, they're gonna be thinking about you. Now, do you see the long arc of financial solutions you can provide a typical family that has moved into a home? And with that being said, do you realize that the insurance industry is also a passive income industry too as well? That's right, once you establish solutions for clients and establish a book of business, as long as you're paying the premiums to the policies on a monthly basis, you get paid. Number five is scale. You can start off as an agent, but come off as a real estate agent to a real estate broker, where you're now recruiting and employing many real estate associates on your team inside your real estate brokerage. And usually that's the attraction for people to progress from being a real estate agent to becoming a real estate broker because they can diversify their income when they recruit and build a team. Yes? Well, guess what? So can an insurance agent. An insurance agent can start from an insurance agent, start getting some traction, start building a team, and start building their agency from day one. Unlike the real estate agents, a life insurance agent doesn't need to get a special license to be a life insurance broker. I know a lot of real estate agents, once they progress to becoming a real estate broker, they have to get another license. In addition, some of the states require them to have more liquid cash deposits in their bank before they get issued a real estate brokerage license. That situation is not the same in the life insurance industry where an agent can gravitate to become a life insurance broker and have multiple agents working in their agency and there's no special licensing or capital requirement necessary by the regulators or the state. And plus, back to number one, due to the simplicity of the insurance industry and the insurance products that you can teach your agent to sell, your agent base can grow that much faster. All right, sixth reason, stress. Listen, there's so many real estate agents I talk to that in the middle of a birthday party on the weekend, in the middle of a family gathering, a get together, a, a wedding, an anniversary celebration, a client calls him at one o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday, hey, ring, 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 Mr. Real Estate Agent, call me up right now, why? I wanna see the house that you listed. And the realtor's like, I'm in the middle of a birthday party. I'm in the middle of, I'm standing up in a wedding. 
And their thought process was, if I don't get out of this situation right now and show that property and be there for a potential client to open the door, to tour around the house, I might lose that deal. And there's so many honorable real estate agents that I know that honestly pull up so many different options on an MLS, provide that package to the client, go on tours to go see the different uh, pieces of property that's available on the MLS for purchase, do a lot of legwork, drive around God's country through traffic, going through this house to this house, open house, tours, this, and the client changes their mind. No deal, no cash, no income, no revenue, a big waste of time. That is stressful when you gotta pay the bills and support your family. What's the flip side to insurance? Listen, the life of an insurance agent is so much more simple. Listen, if traffic is a problem, no problem. Flip up your laptop, call them on the phone, go on video conference, Zoom, go to meeting, Facebook video, whatever the case may be, Google Hangouts, sit down with the client, they're in, the, in, the, in downtown, you're out in the suburbs, have a conversation with them, boom, get, get their needs analysis done, boom, provide them some solutions, boom, show them some options, boom. You can transact business, online through e-applications, through email correspondence, no fighting through traffic, no unnecessary hours on the road, no haggling over clients over $1,000 here or $5,000 here or $10,000 here. You can get business done online, on the phone, conveniently in your home or office. And that is a big stress reducer. And that's why I chose to be in the insurance industry. And a big reason why is because I was a single father. I had custody of my kids. I had to drop off my kids at a certain time. I had to pick them up at a certain time. I had to make sure we did homework and church activities in the evening, whatever martial arts activity was doing. I couldn't be controlled by a client who wants to see the property now, and I'm unavailable. I have other responsibilities to do. I wanted to be in a business where I ran my business, and my business wasn't running me. Number seven is cost. To start up your business as a real estate agent can cost anywhere between $500, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, just based on who the pre licensing provider is for your real estate license. The same license on the insurance industry, instead of costing $1,000, $2,000, is less than $500, at least in the state of Illinois, and some cheaper like Texas, Florida, and California, a lot more less expensive. And in addition to that, the insurance exam compared to the real estate exam, listen, I've seen people study for months to get their real estate license. And I've seen guys in the insurance industry study on a Saturday, sit in the classroom on that Saturday, the following Friday, six days later, pass the exam. It's a very simple license, 150 questions in most, most states, you need a 70% to pass. In addition to that, in terms of cost, what's the cost for you to expand your real estate practice? What's the cost for you to expand your insurance practice? What's the cost for you to expand opportunities in, in terms of business development, getting people to call your phone, getting people to know you as a person in your local community to do this? Remember, back to saturation, you're fighting with a lot of people in your industry as a real estate agent, and a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of insurance agents that provide a lot of value. There's just, again, just not enough of us in this entire industry. And so therefore the overall cost to running a real estate operation versus an insurance operation is much less. Number eight, here's a big one, compensation. Well, Matt, I'm attracted to the real estate industry because I see these guys sell property and they make buku money. They make tons of money when they sell one, two, three, four, five properties. Cool. Well, let's take a look at a couple of real estate agents that we've recruited into the insurance industry, and I'll let them tell you what their experience was from transitions from the real estate industry and the commissions they've been making and the income they've been making inside the insurance industry. First one is Richard Welch, based out of Atlanta, who's a six-figure earner with us. The other one is Danny Singson out of San Mateo, California, also a six-figure income earner. Let's cut to them and see what they have to say about commissions in the real estate industry versus the insurance industry. I'm going to talk, I'm really going to hone in on the commission part or basically the money part, show me the money. But I want to make sure that I go through these numbers so you'll understand how we get to those numbers, okay? So right now, in order to factor that in, we're talking about the average sales in the market. So in my market, anywhere from 8 to 16 sales per year. Uh, you're talking most realtors, some do a little bit more, some most do a little bit less. Um, average commission in our in our market here in Georgia is about 5K. That's after your broker fees and whatever. And uh, so you're looking at those numbers, you're talking 40 to 80K per year. That's on average, okay? And then average time spent to close one of those uh, one of those properties, man, we're talking 30 to 90 days, right? So let's talk about the insurance industry, insurance and money industry. And uh, let's just work the numbers. Here you're 8 to 16, you're 6 to 12 per month, okay? And that's my personal opinion. That's me just personally going out and generating income. But I'm also blessed with the opportunity here to have a team of agents to work with me 
and they're doing about 30 to 60 per month themselves. So when I'm looking at the cases and, and, and the commission per case, myself personally, I'm generating about $1,500 per case in commissions personally. That's nine to 18K per month. And then my team, of course, they're doing my override or I'll say my spread, my broker spread, is about 25%. So 25% of 1,500 is 375, and that's per case. So you're talking anywhere from 11 to 22K per month or 40K per month total. And right here, I'm doing 30 to 90 days. I've even spent longer than that, six months to a year with some clients. You're talking one to three days here. Here, if I'm not working, I'm not eating, right? If I'm not working, my, my family, my bills are not paid. So when the phone rings, I have to get up and go, right? Here, my wife and I would go on vacation and our team still generates 11 to 22K per month while we're on vacation. So what's so great about it is that I have a business here. Here I have a job. I bought myself a job. I'm a, I am what they consider to be self-employed, but here I'm a business owner. And that's a big difference. If you're familiar with the, with the cash flow quadrant, um, to go from self-employed to business owner is very difficult, but the easiest way to do that is with the team. So I'm blessed to have that. And I like to think about the growth of both of these industries. This one is more linear. Linear just basically means it's real steady and it's not a lot of growth, right? It's just steady. Here it's exponential because as my team grows, so does my income. But guess what doesn't grow? Because I help people open up offices, I don't carry the expenses of their offices. So while I have 80K here and have a lot of expenses, here, I have very few expenses. I only pay for the office that I have here in Alpharetta, Georgia. I was a cop for 19 years. I was actually doing real estate on the side, okay? Everyone seemed like they were doing real estate on the side. They want to get their license and make a couple dollars. And, you know, uh, me, like everyone else, I thought I was going to be a millionaire, uh, selling to all my friends and family. And I thought, gosh, um, maybe I can meet some clients, things like that. But here's the thing. I was chasing people. I don't know about you guys, but I just hate chasing people. Here's the thing, when I stopped working, the money would stop coming in. And that was a big problem, guys, right? Because if you're in uh, real estate, by the way, I love real estate, okay? It's just, you gotta look at the platform on how income is earned. And if your income is earned and it solely depends on you, you gotta look at that. The average realtor, you know, they say here, especially here in the Bay Area, is making maybe one to two transactions a year. Now, even if the, the, the price point of the actual home is pretty high, like let's say 800 to a million dollars, maybe your you, maybe your income, if you if you only have one side of the deal, is maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars, right, with your split with your broker, let's just say, you know, but you spent, I don't know, a couple of months on the deal, you know, 30 to 45 days in escrow alone. That doesn't even go to all the time invested finding the client, doing the open houses and all this stuff. Trust me, I, I have much love for the, the average real estate person, but here's the thing. Once you stop, your income stops. And that was one of the biggest considerations that I really considered why money industry and insurance industry over real estate. In the money industry, guys, it's, it's never a dull day because you can have a pipeline. Can you imagine, instead of doing one or two transactions in a year, you can do 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 transactions in a month. Think about the scale of income. Last month, right, uh, what would have taken me, I don't know, uh, five, six, seven, eight, maybe sales on big deals in real estate, you know, I earned in one month over six figures last month. You can find me on Instagram at Danny Sinkson one or Facebook Danny Sinkson. You see what I'm talking about? Doesn't that blow your mind? The insurance industry is cool too as well. The insurance industry is sexy. It pays you sexy and guess what? The work that you do is very noble for the clients that you serve in the insurance industry. Number nine, commoditization. What am I talking about commoditization? Listen, there's a couple things going on because of technology. Well, number one, the conversation about artificial intelligence inside the real estate community is a very heavily talked about subject, as well as it is inside the insurance industry. So here's the thing, commoditization has forced technology to replace some of the roles and functions that a typical real estate agent does. Everybody can see a property online now. Everybody can see the curb appeal. People can see the front yard. People can see the back yard, the rooms inside. And what I've seen a lot of real estate agents come back to me saying, man, you know what? Technology, they've just reduced me down to becoming a professional door opener. And I know there's a lot of hardworking real estate agents out there putting in the honest work and earning a solid income, but yet technology is eroding some of the things that you're doing, which erodes some of the commissions, the average commissions that you're making on that deal. Because a lot of people are doing the legwork already. They're seeing the property, 
They get in contact with whoever they need to get in contact with to make the deal sweeter. And they're coming to you just to help them close the deal. A lot of people feel that real estate commissions are something they shouldn't be paying anyway. It's a commoditized line of work that's getting worse and worse over time. Versus, does artificial intelligence come into the insurance industry? Well, it might to the cousins of our industry, which is property and casualty and homeowners and renters, etc. But when it comes to life insurance, when it comes to retirement planning, this is a big intangible conversation because this involves emotional intelligence. You can't teach a robot how to have a heart. You can't teach a computer how to feel for one's kids, how to feel for one's wife and husband, their spouse. You can't teach a computer how to feel for one wanting to create a legacy for their family for multiple generations. Artificial intelligence will never be emotional intelligence. And that's why the commoditization of the insurance agent versus the real estate agent, there's no comparison. And here's the thing to a commoditization. I realized that in my community, I wanted to be valued, right? And so the evidence of that has been the expansion of our offices just within inside a Chicagoland location in Oakbrook. We've been to four different offices in four different years on a consecutive basis, each time growing our location. So the demand is there, just not everybody knows about the insurance industry. And that's why I'm glad you're watching this video. And number 10, last but not least, recession proof. Is real estate recession proof? Is the insurance industry recession proof? Listen, I've been doing this now for 20 years. I got involved in the insurance industry in 1998, at the tail end of 1998. I saw the bull market of the, of the late 90s and the dot-com crash of 2001. I've also seen the bull market of real estate in the mid-2000s and also the real estate crash and the mortgage-backed security crash in the 08, 09. I've seen over time what happens to people in the real estate industry, in the mortgage industry, in the real estate attorney uh, fields, what happens to them when the recession takes place. And you know what? We're due for another recession. And guess what happens in an in insurance practice, an in insurance agency? Our business actually gains volume. It actually gains traction in the middle of a recession. Why? Because in the middle of a financial crisis, the insurance agents, the insurance agency owners are the financial first responders. In the middle of a family tragedy, in the middle of a financial crisis, we're able to provide capital, we're able to provide, ca provide cash, we're able to provide claims to people in the worst times of their financial life. And then that's when people say, oh, I'm so glad I set this up a year ago. I'm so glad I set up five years. I didn't know I was doing it, but now I'm glad it's it because in the worst of times, I now have found myself in the best of times because I financially prepared myself through the leadership of my insurance agent and the local insurance agency owners, uh, a, a business, and now I'm financially prepared. I'm still able to send my kids to college. I'm able to make sure that uh, the people I love and care about are taken care of is something where it happened to me. That's what the life of an insurance agent does. I know it's counterintuitive to think that insurance business thrives during the middle of a recession. But think about this. Our agency called PHP Agency was birthed in October of 2009 in the middle of a recession. We started with 66 guys then. And today, close to 10 years later, we have close to 10,000 agents from coast to coast and in Puerto Rico. I remember delivering my first death benefit claims and my first set of retirement plans going from one parent to the beneficiary, which is the child. And I remember pulling these checks from my jacket uh, at the funeral and handing it to the family and says, by the way, I know you didn't want anything from your parents, but guess what? They planned for it. And throughout that uh, moment, she teared up. She gave me a big hug. She started introducing me to all the family uh, at the funeral, at the wake, and I said, listen, listen, uh, uh, I like referrals, and I like what you're doing here right now, but just not at the funeral, just not, just not at the wake here. I, I just feel very uncomfortable. But listen, what, what didn't come across her mind at that moment was financial worry, was financial pain, was financial grief. She can honestly mourn the life that her parents had given her, she can mourn the death of the people that she loved and cared because both of them had passed away. And yet, to receive all this money tax-free or transfer from an IRA, not to her, as an inherited IRA, and have a house paid off is all through an insurance agent. It is all through the work of somebody diligently going through somebody's financial details and finding the financial leaks and making sure that worst case scenario happens, you can still keep on uh, to the people that you love and care about what you originally planned for them without government involvement without uh, people getting seized by the state uh, probate courts to make sure that people's uh, 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 hands from the creditors are away from your family estate. That's the life of what an insurance agent does. It's a very noble and honorable profession to be in. And in closing, for me, 
I've realized that I'd much rather work instead of bricks and mortar and property and real estate, I would much rather work with real people. So with that being said, investing time into our agents, into our agency builders, managers, and leaders, there's an exponential dynamic that comes with teaching them financial products and services they can deploy with their clients in the community. Instead of investing in brick and mortar, I get to invest in real people. And unlike real estate, where real estate is limited and linear, investing in real people is unlimited and exponential. For example, I can recruit a guy, I can build a guy, I can teach a guy this industry. And here's the thing I don't realize. This is the size of the fight in this guy's heart of how much he wants to win for his family. And in this industry, based on the book of business he can build, on the agency that he can build, it's an exponential market that can be exposed to, which means exponential revenue for that agent or agency builder. And I've discovered that over my 20 years in the insurance industry, the investment of time, coaching, teaching, mentoring, and leading those inside the insurance industry has given me a hundred times return than what I've experienced with my own personal experiences in real estate. So listen, these are the reasons why I chose insurance over real estate that may not match yours. I'm not saying I'm the end all be all, but I would love your feedback and I'll know your thoughts and what you're thinking. So that being said, drop them in the comment section below. I do my best to reply to them. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload a video just like this. I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.